Okay, coming at you with another quick video. In this video, we're going to go over how to connect to a Google Cloud Platform server uh, using SSH. And we're going to go over how to do this if your local machine, uh, the sh machine that you're wanting to connect to your server with, is a Mac. And I'm also going to briefly cover how to do it using Windows. I don't have an example to show you, but I will explain how to do it on Windows. Uh, first, I'm going to do it from, you can do this either from a Mac or a Linux. Uh, machine. So first thing we do, need to do is on your local machine, the one that you have sitting in front of you, we need to generate an SSH key pair. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So we're going to open up our terminal and we're going to type in SSH-keygen. And I want to add a, a command in here, which is going to be dash capital C. And this is going to be the username that you're going to use to log in. So I'm going to type in MacBook. This will be the username you use to log in. You press enter. Uh, it's going to ask you where you want to store this file. You press enter. Uh, I already have a key for this, uh, so I have to overwrite it. But yours is probably not going to ask you if you want to overwrite it. You press enter and you're going to have that key generated. If it asks you if you want to uh, if you want to have a password, you can safely ignore that and bypass it just by pressing enter twice uh, because we are not going to be using passwords for this. So now that that's done, let's take a look at what is in our .ssh folder. So we're going to do a cd um, user directory slash .ssh. And now that we're in here, let's list the files. You can see uh, this is probably, in all likelihood, mostly empty, but these are the two files it just created, the IDED pub file and the, uh, the private key. So these two, this is the private key, this is the public key. So let's do a command to show what the public key is uh, in our terminal. So CAT, and then type in the name of the public key file that we just created. So this one that ends in .pub, let's press enter. And you can see this is the file that was just created. Uh, we want to copy this. Let's do a copy. We want to come over to our Google Cloud uh, platform, go to our VM instances, pick the instance that you want to log into, and scroll. Uh, press the edit button at the top. Scroll down to where the SSH keys are. You can add one in. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Uh, the SSH keys, it's under security and access. So let's press add item and we can paste that key in. If you notice here at the very end of the key, it has the username that we added when we created the key, which is important. We're gonna press save. Just wait for a moment for that to save. Now let's go back to our terminal uh, after this is done saving. Okay, it's done saving. So if we scroll down and look at the SSH key section, which is right here, you can see that the username is MacBook and here is the key. All right, so let's go back to our terminal and let's try logging in. So we can do SSH uh, and then we're going to type dash I and this is going to ask us for our private key file. So our private key file, since we're already in our SSH key directory, we can just type in the name of the private key. This is not the one that ends in .pub. It's just the, the name of the private key. And the reason that I want to do this is because in some situations, you may have a lot of private keys in here and you don't know which one that you're supposed to be using or you have one that's specifically for this specific connection. You can, uh, you can just press dash I and then pick the key itself. And then you want to type in the username that you gave it. And then also you want to press the at symbol and find out what the IP address is. This could also be the, um, the domain name is also possible. So we'll paste that in there. Now let's press enter and it created the connection successfully. 
Now, you may, let's, uh, let's exit out of this um, connection, exit. Or let me, let me just show you something real quick. Uh, so we do an ls to see, let's go back to the home directory. You can see that there's a bunch of different users on this server, and one of the users is MacBook. And that is the user that was created when we created this connection. So when you create a connection, that username is going to create a, f uh, a home directory for that user. So you may not keep all your files in, in that uh, home directory for that user. It may be in something different, but I just wanted to let you know that when you, when you do define that user using the dash C command when we created the key, it is also going to create a new user on your server when you create that connection. So let's exit out of this connection. Um, and let's talk about uh, using this same key with uh, some SFTP client. So let's open up, oh, let's open up Cyberduck, which is an SFTP client. We've got it open here. We can create a new connection. This is the server that we've got going on. We want to type in the username and then it's, oops, I forgot to switch the protocol to SFTP. Uh, we've got the right IP address. It's on port 22, which is standard. If you're, um, you're not on port 22, you would, you would probably know that or somebody should have told you, but standard setup is port 22. And see here, you can select the private key. And right here, it's on our list currently, but you could also choose which one it is. And this is the private key. It's the one that does not end in, P in pub. So we press connect. And you can see here, we are connected. I'm in my home MacBook address, but if we wanted to go to the root directory of the server, you could see we have all of our files there. So that is, that's how you connect using the same uh, key pair uh, both in the terminal and using an SFTP client. Now let's talk about Windows. So on Windows, uh, you, you let's take the scenario where you're on your Windows machine and you want to connect to a Linux server. So you're on Windows. Windows does not really have the ability to create SSH keys. Well, it does, but it's not as user friendly. So what the industry standard is, is to use a client called PuTTY. So you go to the PuTTY website on Windows and you download the PuTTY software. And when you download the PuTTY software, it's gonna come with two pieces of software. The first one is going to be, um, the first one's going to be the, the PuTTY software itself for connecting in a terminal. Um, and the second one is going to be uh, uh, the key generation software. So I think it's, uh, putty gen so you open up putty gen and then you cre you create a, um, a an ssh key but you have to remember to add the username in the comments okay so there's going to be a little section called comment and that's what you want to use um, and then once you've done that let me see if i can expand this image a little bit not in front of a, here we go. Here's an image to look at. So if you look at that, you're gonna have the session uh, on your screen and you want to make sure and type in the IP address or the, uh, the domain name in there. And then underneath, uh, I think it's auth or connection. Let me see if I can find it. Here, yeah, it's gonna be underneath the connection tab under SSH, there's this auth section. And underneath this auth section, you're gonna see this private key file for authentication. And that is where you're going to put your, your PuTTY uh, private key that you just generated using the PuTTY key gen software. And it's important to note that the private key generated by PuTTY is a it's a proprietary version of the, the key. So there's two different versions. There's the Unix 
uh, type, which is what we just used creating our keys, and that's an open SSH type. But then the other type is a PuTTY type. And when you're using the PuTTY software, you want to use the, the PuTTY type, which is, I think it ends in the file extension PPK. And if you need to uh, use that same key on OpenSSH, instead of using PuTTY, you have to use the, the, PuTTY, the PuTTY key gen software to convert that key to an OpenSSH formatted private key. Um, but if you are just using PuTTY on Windows, you, you don't need to do that. You can just uh, go under session and then the auth section and then add in your private key file for authentication uh, and make sure and pick the private key. And then you can press open and it should open up that connection. Um, you can also do the same thing on Windows using an SFTP client, just like we did here on Mac. but. Uh, it's, it's the same process. So I hope that that helps, um, and we'll talk to you later.